Lance POV. I spent the entire day hiding out in the trees that were directly behind the border between our pack and the Great Forest Pack. I was waiting for Alana to come visit me, since it was finally her 18th birthday. I had only seen her one other time since she helped me escape, and I couldn't wait to see her again. I don't know what it is about that little werewolf, but I was mesmerized by her beauty the first time I saw her. When I got to know her a little and realized how sweet and kind she was, I just wanted to take her with me to my pack, but I knew I couldn't. The one time I saw her, I found out what day her birthday was on, and I committed that date to my memory. I waited for her until the sun started to set. Then I walked home with my head down and my shoulders slumped in defeat. I had a bad feeling about why she didn't show up, but there was nothing I could do without knowing for sure what the reason was. If I crossed the border, they might get the upper hand on me, and the chances of her being able to help me escape a second time were slim to none. Alana POV As we walked up the steps to the pack house, a sense of uneasiness crept into me. I couldn't help but to worry about what was going to happen when the rest of the pack learned about me being Alpha Kyle's mate. I knew he was right about some people wanting to hurt me because of us being mates, and that had me thinking about all kinds of different scenarios. The second we stepped inside, I felt dozens of eyes snap in our direction. Then, a round of hushed murmurs could be heard all around us. I glanced up at Kyle's handsome face and saw that he was still smiling while he talked to Beta Anthony, so I tried to ignore the stares and whispers. When Kyle finished his short conversation with the Beta, he glanced down at me and cheerfully asked, Would you like to see our suite? I wanted more than anything to get away from everybody's prying eyes, so I was quick to say, Yes, I would love that. Kyle held my hand, and we walked up the six flights of stairs to get to his suite. And by the time we reached his floor, I was out of breath from climbing so many stairs. When Kyle noticed I was struggling to catch my breath, he frowned at me and shook his head, which I did not like one bit. Instantly, I looked down at the floor and mumbled, I'm fine. Keep leading the way. Kyle didn't say anything as he led me the rest of the way. However, after he opened the door to his suite, he motioned for me to go ahead of him, as he happily stated, Welcome to our home, Alana. I hope you like it. I walked into the large living room and looked around in awe. Everything looked pristine and beautiful, from the light blue carpet to the cream-colored walls and furniture. There were a few large paintings hanging on the walls, and they were absolutely amazing. One of the paintings was of a waterfall with a beautiful forest around it. The other painting consisted of wolves running through a meadow of wildflowers. As I continued to look around, Kyle walked up behind me. Then he wrapped his arms around my waist. Right away he nuzzled his nose against my neck and breathed in my scent. Then he huskily asked, Mate, can I mark you? I was quick to slide down and out of his arms. Then I spun around and adamantly stated, No, you cannot. I need to make sure this is going to work before I let you do that. Kyle looked at me with a shocked expression on his face, almost like he was in disbelief that I was able to get out of his arms so easily. I had wrestled with my father enough times to learn how to get away from somebody, if it was a one-on-one -on -one match. I may not have been strong and muscular, but I was thin and surprisingly agile for how weak I was. After a second, Kyle flashed me a sexy smirk. Then he affectionately murmured, Ah, oh, come on, Alana. I have loved you from afar for the past seven years. I made almost everybody leave you alone and stop teasing you. I'm telling you that I want you to be my mate. Why are you holding back? Something doesn't feel right about this, I mumbled, more to myself than anything, but he still heard me with his heightened sense of hearing. I don't feel that way, he quickly retorted. 
I released a sigh of frustration, because I really didn't know how to explain what I was feeling, nor did I want to. Instead, I walked away from him and continued looking at the suite. Kyle followed right behind me everywhere I went, but he didn't say anything else. Not that I minded him being quiet. After I finished checking out the whole suite, he finally talked again and sheepishly asked, What would you like for dinner? And don't hold back. It's your birthday, so pick anything you want. I thought about it for a second. Then I smiled as I replied, I want steak and a baked potato. What else do you want with it? He curiously asked. Nothing. I wouldn't be able to fit any more than that in my small stomach. I timidly answered as I patted my belly. He furrowed his eyebrows as he gave me an odd look. Then he shrugged his shoulders and replied, Okay, mate. Steak and potatoes it is. While Kyle cooked us dinner, I walked around and gazed at the pictures and wall hangings a little closer. However, since it was a quick dinner to cook, Kyle was calling for me in no time. I joined him at the dining table right away. Then we ate our dinner in silence. Kyle kept glancing at me, but I couldn't tell what emotion he was feeling at that moment. He was doing a good job of masking what he was feeling, and that made me feel even more uneasy. As soon as we finished eating, Kyle put the dirty dishes in the dishwasher. Then he grabbed my hand and led me to the couch. After he sat down, he pulled me down onto his lap. Then he curiously asked, what would you like to do for the rest of the evening? I just want to relax and talk. There's a lot I don't know about you, I nonchalantly responded. What would you like to know? He immediately asked. Everything, I stated, in all seriousness. Kyle chuckled before he started telling me the important details of his life. While I sat on his lap and listened to him talk, he trailed his fingertips up and down my arm. After just a few minutes, I couldn't stop thinking about the sparks that were tingling where his fingertips touched. It wasn't long before my body relaxed against his, and the uneasiness I was previously feeling went away. That was also when I started to feel the exhaustion settle into my bones. I was so uncomfortable leaning against Kyle that I could feel myself slowly drifting toward sleep. And that's when I heard him timidly ask, Alana, are you ready for me to mark you yet? I glanced up at him through my sleepy eyes and drowsily mumbled in my half-asleep state of mind. Sure. Kyle POV. I couldn't believe the moon goddess gave me Alana as my mate. I wasn't sure if her body would be able to handle me marking her much less the everyday stresses of being a Luna. When we reached the top of the stairs, and she was having trouble catching her breath, I knew right then and there that she wouldn't be able to handle being my Luna. I also knew that I had to do something about it, but I wasn't sure what. I couldn't fathom the thought of her becoming anybody else's mate, but I also didn't want to keep her around and watch her slowly die. If I was going to watch my mate die in front of me, then I wanted it to happen right away, before I got too attached to having her around. In fact, I needed it to happen before we marked each other, because if it happened after we were fully marked and mated, the breaking of the mate bond would be a lot more painful. However, if I could talk her into letting me mark her, I could use that opportunity to end her life right then and there. If I did, I wouldn't have to worry about what to do with her any longer. Unfortunately, when I asked if I could mark her, she was quick to shoot down the idea. I wasn't sure how long it would take to talk her into letting me, so I decided to be really nice and cook her whatever she wanted for her birthday dinner. Surprisingly, she didn't want much so it didn't take me long at all to cook the steak and baked potatoes she requested. While we ate the dinner, neither of us talked at all, but we kept stealing glances at each other. I made sure to keep my emotions hidden, but I could see the wariness swirling in her pretty gray eyes. 
After we finished eating and I cleaned up the mess from dinner, we sat together on the couch for a little while. It was nice to have her sitting on my lap, and the sparks that flowed between us when our skin made contact felt downright amazing. When I asked what she wanted to do for the rest of the evening, she just wanted to relax and learn more about me. So I bored her nearly to death with all of the boring details of my life. After a while of me talking, I finally felt her body finally relax against me. For just a second, I thought about keeping her around, because it felt so nice to have her in my arms. However, the darker side of me wasn't having it. As soon as she reached that point of being half asleep and half awake, I timidly asked, Alana, are you ready for me to mark you yet? She glanced up at me through sleepy eyes and drowsily mumbled in her half-asleep state of mind. Sure. Instantly, I felt my lips curve up to form a wide smile as my canines elongated. Then I dipped my head down to the curve of her thin neck and took in a deep inhale of her sweet and intoxicating scent. I knew I would miss smelling her heavenly scent, but I had to do what was best for my pack, which was not to have a weak Luna. After a few seconds of enjoying her scent, I bit into the side of her neck and severed her coronary artery. When I pulled my canines away from her throat and glanced up at Alana's gray eyes, I saw sheer terror in them. Then she started gasping and making gurgling sounds as she struggled to breathe. I gazed into her eyes and watched them get even duller by the second, and there was no missing the betrayal that swirled in those dull gray eyes of hers. The last gurgling sound I heard her make was the most horrible, and I knew I would never be able to get it out of my head. I was filled with regret right away, but I knew there wasn't anything I could do about it at that point. A few seconds later, I felt our mate bond break, and it was hands down the worst pain I had ever felt. It was also what caused me to start sobbing as I held Alana's lifeless body in my arms. 